Now let's turn to movies. He watches the bad ones so that you don't have to. It's our friend and our film critic, Mr. Richard Roper. Hey, Rich. Thanks, Ryan. Hi, Brooke. How are Hi. you? You're doing fantastic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Great job. He makes me feel very comfortable. He's doing okay. He's about a B-plus for today yeah, so far. Yeah. By the way, this is the most diehard Sox fan that I yeah, know. for oh, sure. Really? Yeah. You wrote oh, a book man. about the White Sox, Did actually. you? Yeah. So, okay, well, I can talk to you all day about yeah. sports, but we got to talk about movies, though. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. First up, the Showtime Lakers are back in season two of the hit show Winning Time on Max. It's about the rise of the Lakers dynasty in the 80s and their bitter rivalry with the Celtics. Take a look at Winning Time season two. Look, Irvin, you know why nobody repeats? Because the guys that you beat along the way, they spent all that time figuring out new ways to break you down. We're not gonna take it. Beat LA. We built this team to win. But things change. I am in charge, not in magic. A real coach doesn't need to prove it, Paul. All right, Adrian Brody was in the yes. first one <laughs> and playing Pat Riley. Uh, I watched season one, yeah. and I'm gonna. Uh, first, I want to spin or say, then I'm gonna tell it's you my gripe. Let's hear your gripe. Let's hear your complaint. My gripe is that it was factually incorrect in so many ways. Like Jerry West was threatening a lawsuit because it was defamation of character. Jerry West, one of the nicest guys in the world, and in season one, they made him out to be like such a Listen, villain. That's a legitimate point. I will tell you this: the producers for season two have actually come out with this companion guide explaining every scene, why they change certain details, why they move certain things around but you got to remember guys whether it's a, a limited series or a movie it's fiction it's a stylized interpretation of events what I love about this Brooke and Ryan is that it reminds us that before Magic and Larry Bird, the NBA was kind of a niche sport. It mm -hmm. was on CBS on like mm -hmm. tape delay, and that rivalry in the Showtime Lakers, that ushered in the era of the real media superstars and the personalities coming through, and they do a great job of capturing that. I just can't get over the cast, the in, cast this, is incredible. in this series. Yeah, the cast is great. The guy that plays Magic Johnson, I did some homework on him. A, he's not 6'9", but they make yeah. him look like he's super tall. Right. He didn't play a lot of organized basketball, but he is so believable. All right, we got to spend on that one. Big spend. All righty, well, next up, two brothers find new musical success after their 1979 debut album is rediscovered three decades later. Take a look at Dreamin' Wild. You know, uh, I was listening to the, the old tapes from Dreamin' Wild, and... I was trying to figure out, you know, how everyone has been saying it's got this weird magical feel to it. Uh, I couldn't figure out what it was or how to do it. And then I was listening to the tapes and I finally figured it out. It's you. You're the magic of it. Mm, all right, set this one up a little more okay, for us. This is amazing, guys. This is a true story. Two brothers, when they were teenagers, recorded an album. It went nowhere. They went back to their lives in the Pacific Northwest. 30 years later, a record collector finds one copy of it, writes an online piece about it. It goes viral, and they actually had a second chance when they were like 50 years old and actually had a pretty good career renaissance. So they're playing real-life characters there. Casey Affleck's one of our best actors. He's terrific. What I love about this is it's a celebration of second chances, and also, especially for Ryan, as a musician, I think you'll love the music in here. It's beautiful music, and it's original, original stuff. And it reminds me of my pops. He got a platinum album 30 years right? later after he released the movie, really thanks cool. to Quentin Tarantino. All right, you could Google that. Anyway, next, a young girl's life changes dramatically when she's sent to live with her grandmother on a flower farm after the death of her parents. Rich, what did you think of The Lost Flowers of Alice Hart? Hey guys, this is really good, and it's a spend, but it's very, very heavy stuff, so you got to know going in. A lot of scenes of domestic abuse. But eventually, it becomes a very inspirational story. And Sigourney mm -hmm. Weaver, that's an icon right there. Yeah, that's in a one of her to go best performances. It. Yeah, absolutely, bro. All right, and finally, I love a good mob movie. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited about this one. Mobland. John Travolta plays a small town sheriff who tries to keep the peace against a violent mafia. Rich, is this a spend or a save? Brooke, it's a spend. You know what you're going to get with something like this. But you got John Travolta playing the sheriff. Come on. Wouldn't you want John Travolta to be the sheriff of your small town? Yeah. yeah. You know, he is actually <laughs> one of the coolest guys I've interviewed. He's your bud. Yeah, he was awesome. John Travolta, so talented and. Uh, and, and God rest uh, Kelly Preston because yeah, I interviewed them lovely. together yeah. and they were doing a mob movie. He was playing Scotty. When Scotty, he was Scotty yeah. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, but what a, what a great actor. Who, who's your favorite actor? Oh gosh, I love Sam Rockwell. 
Anything nice pick. Sam, Very well done. Anything with Sam Rockwell, I am a huge I'm fan. Impressed. I think he's super talented. He is. He makes everything he's in a little bit better just by being in it. Right? Yeah. Now, Rich, uh, do you have a favorite actor? Is that possible for a film um, critic? I think it's probably Steve Guttenberg from the Police Academy <laughs> movies. Probably the greatest thespian of our generation. There you Either go. him or De Niro. Yeah, uh, De Niro. Well, I know you had dinner with Al Pacino before. That's... I did. Good How guy. That? He was really nice and we had beer and salad. Hoo Four That's spends. all you need. It's all about balance. Beer and salad. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. We'll be right back. <laughs> Watch breaking news on YouTube. Subscribe to ABC7 Chicago Eyewitness News.